Hello everybody, JP here, and what you're looking at right now is the plastic scheme of my 1995 Yamaha YZ125, and I just wanted to show you guys this because you can see how kind of ugly they are, just because of the time period, you know, they just look boxy, wasn't technology yet to make them look how they are now on the 2016 bikes, and you can see how my seat uh, just, you know, the bracket broke off in a hair scramble, or the tip of the bracket broke off there, and this one totally broke off. So my seat was hanging on my bike with a bungee cord for about two months. And then this is a subframe, you know, not in that bad shape, but uh, functionality-wise, but obviously it's started to rust. This air boot is kind of cracked and old, faded. So anyway, without further ado, I'm going to show you guys what my YZ125 looks like today after I converted it to sort of a 2001 slash 2004 hybrid. So yeah, believe it or not, about a month ago this was a regular, dirty, old, <laughs> smelly 1995 Yamaha YZ125. And I like to call this the 0104 hybrid because it has a subframe, airbox, side plates, and rear fender and seat from a 96 to 01, except for the subframe is strictly 01 because 01 was the only year they made aluminum subframes in that variation, and along with the front fender and number plate. And then the gas tank and shrouds are from an 04. Actually, they're from an 05. The gas tank's from an 05 YZ250. No difference. So, I'm going to go through quickly on how you guys can convert your old looking 125 or 250 into something new like this. Because instead of selling yours, going through the process, you know, if you find a great deal on a 94, I know I've seen them for like $200, $300 on Craigslist. This is a great way to make your dirt bike look 10 years newer. So, here we go. So, first of all, this exhaust system. This is actually not from 95 to 94. You can only get the fatties for some reason on sites like Motosport and, you know, Rocky Mountain ATV MC for 97 and up, or sorry, 96 and up. Well, believe it or not, they're the same shape and everything. The only, oops, wasp. The only difference is where this exhaust joint connects right here. So all you have to do is buy the same thing. It bolts on correctly and then you just have to finagle with this right here. But it looks great. This is also an FMF silencer right here. Uh, the sticker came off. You can probably see the sticker as I do, but you can tell it's not stock. It's chrome right there, stainless steel. All you have to do with the older, sorry, newer subframe is get a aluminum bracket eighth inch aluminum from your local hardware store, Home Depot. I just bought it at work because I get a discount. And so that's Moving exhaust. on cosmetically. Uh, fender and number plate are obviously from an 01. This is, these are actually technically from a YZ426F. Same thing now. I'll show you guys how I modified it to go on. Now the front fender literally bolts on. Now, oops, almost fell off. Now the number plate you're going to have to make a bracket, once again, out of 1 8 inch aluminum. You can buy this, these rods of aluminum at the store for about 3 bucks, and you'll make a lot. So I highly recommend Home Depot, do it best, and then you'll bend it and drill two holes, and you'll see that it goes down on there. At first, when I put this on, I zip-tied it. I zip-tied this little hole to this bracket. Didn't work, broke off in two hair scrambles, lost my number plate twice, not fun. I hate, hated looking for it. Also to prevent that again, I got this IMS brake cable guide. And the only reason I really got this over stock was A, my stock one broke and I was pretty disappointed because it, it kind of just hit a tree really lightly and just snapped off. And the thing is that the stock is $21 OEM and this IMS is $7 on parts, Partzilla, and so I bought a few parts from Partzilla, so I thought, why not buy this while I'm at it? So, yep, moving on to the back of the bike. 
So the heart of this whole conversion is the subframe right here. Now, this will fit, or sorry, this will work with subframes from 96 and up. I'm sorry, 96 to 2001 if you have the 95 frame. Now, this is a 2001, and I'll show you why I bought a 2001. When the Yamaha YZ125 was designed in 2001, they put this aluminum subframe on it. It's significantly lighter and looks a hell of a lot better. So I would highly recommend getting the aluminum. You can get whatever you want. You'll spend about $5 more on used eBay subframes for the aluminum. I think it's way better of an investment. And honestly, if you're gonna do this conversion, you're buying basically half a dirt bike. So I would not buy OEM brand new parts that are gonna rob you. I would buy used eBay, you know, just eBay, Craigslist, patiently wait for new listings to pop up. And I'll show you why right now. So price wise, this subframe was $32 on eBay and the subframe when you get it is not going to seem like it's going to fit. What you do is you hinge it on right here, slide it down, sort of bend your way onto these. It'll fit eventually. Just there's a method to it which you'll find out, but I it, it's going to fit. Airbox was $5 on eBay. Can't beat that. I don't know how much I paid for shipping, but $5. These side plates were $15. They were left over at a Yamaha dealership. These are actually GYTR. So the, the fancy Yamaha brand, so I got those. And this is a regular UFO rear fender, which I got, I paid the full price, $15 or whatever, because I just was not about to buy a used fender. But yeah, so I got a brand new rear end. Uh, it was about, you know, with everything included on the back, you know, 30 for the seat, five for the air box, 40 for the subframe, 15 for the panels, and I think 15 for the the fender you know you're looking at about i want to say like a hundred and forty dollars which you know i mean it might seem expensive i mean that's not the full thing i'll price it at the end for you guys but so right now we're looking at 140 dollars and then this is the aft part of the bike which i'll show you i got a really good deal on this conversion because this gas tank was on Craigslist. A guy was selling two YZ250 gas tanks from 2005 for $40 each. I bought both of them and sold. I bought a yellow one, 50th anniversary Yamaha, and a blue one. Sold the yellow one on eBay for $100. So I'm already ahead. So put this gas tank on, use that profit to buy these brand new UFO radiator shrouds. They look great. $50, you know, a little pricey but I supported my local cycle shop they ordered them in for me Joe cycles so anyway but yeah to upgrade to the newer gas tank you'll see in here there's a metal bracket of once again eighth inch aluminum you can cut it up with a angle grinder bench grinder I use my bench grinder so and then you know you can shape it and do whatever you want with it and then again I got another bracket out of eighth inch, eighth inch aluminum for these radiators to bolt onto the radiator shrouds. Again, really easy. Seems intimidating at first. It's not. You can do it in about five minutes. You can cut all the metal brackets on this bike. Looks great. <sighs> Already talked about the exhaust and I think that's basically it. I'll just, I'm just going to walk around and give you guys some tips if you're trying to make your bike look better or just refurbishing one and just stuff I've learned in this project so that you know I could help some more people. So one thing that I learned, guys, if you're gonna do this yourselves, cut these two brackets off, this one on this side, and this one on this side. The reason why I didn't cut them off is because I painted them. I don't want it to show through again. I just spray painted it with rust only, I and mean, I'm just praying for the best but I would highly recommend cutting them off just because it touches the airbox there and it looks kind of bad. Not really anything functionality wise. Also, I would highly recommend always buying steel sprockets and not aluminum, especially if you race enduro and only ride trails and hair scrambles. And here's why, because the aluminums 
wear down so easily and I'll show you how easily they wear down. Pure sprocket looks like this. After limited use, you have some problems. This is an aluminum sprocket. Lasted less than a year. Didn't even ride that much. Steel sprocket has been on here for about, this is before I even did the conversion. So a few months now, looks great. Uh, rust a little bit, spray some oil on it after you clean it. Don't spray oil on your rotors. But yep, looks great. Anyway guys, I don't want to ramble on and everything about stuff that you guys don't want to hear about. So, you know, ask any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. This is, you know, something I'm really proud of and something that I'd like to see more people do if they just, you know, if you have a 95 or 94 YZ125 or 250 and want to convert it, you know, you're just fed up with how it looks. I know looks aren't everything, but, you know, if you can transfer your bike for sub $200, why wouldn't you? So anyway, this is JP again. Like, comment, subscribe, follow my Instagram at uh, Team5081 Word, kind of a joke Instagram my friends and I made for dirt bikes, but you know, look it up anyway. Try to be funny and cool on it. So anyway, thanks for watching. And uh, yeah. Uh, just some other touches. Oops, don't tip it over. These hoses look way better when they're stuffed in there or zip tied to the frame. Don't just let them hang out. They just, I don't know why, they look terrible. I would highly suggest not buying motorcycle specific antifreeze unless you're seriously like sponsored motocross racer whatever you can afford it use gm dex cool from walmart i used to pay 15 dollars a quart at my local power sports dealership for like moto cool and whatever they have uh maxima coolant i paid 12 dollars for a gallon of this and it can fill my bike up twice so you know just do the math everything adds up Obviously, if you have a bike like this, you're trying to go budget, so that's just another tip. You know, gear oil again. I'll show you what I I'll show you what I used for it. Again, this is the Dex Cool that I bought. GM. It's the orange type. Works fine. Buy the pre diluted. I mean, you can buy the uh, concentrated, but I just I just like having it pre diluted for me, just so I don't mess up or anything. And then you can buy at Walmart these gear lubricant. Same as the Pro Honda, I mean the uh, the bottles they come in, it's the same stuff, it's literally, it's ridiculous how similar it is, except for this is a lighter weight, guaranteed if you buy this lightweight gear lubricant, you will not have clutch problems, or not guaranteed, but it's just, it helps your clutch out a lot. I used to have a lot of clutch problems, switch to that over the Honda, Pro Honda, nothing against it, but it's just, you know, I don't have them anymore, so, you know. Who knows, maybe that's what the, uh, the magic touch was.